Hey, welcome to my workshop. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I'm going to be talking about blogging cameras. This is digital cameras used for doing blogs or now called vlogging, video logging uh, types of YouTube videos, kind of like what this is, in fact. Um, I'm not going to really be discussing state-of-the-art uh, cameras because I don't really have any, but I want to show you some of the options that I've been using, some of the good and bad points, and maybe it'll give you some ideas on what you can do yourself. So stay tuned. Well, the first camera that I'd like to talk about in my collection that I use for video is a Flip Ultra HD. This is the third generation version that came out after Cisco bought the company and before Cisco killed the Flip line. <clears throat> it's a little bit thinner than the older Generation 2 Ultra HD. It records two hours, 120 minutes of HD video. It has no exposure control, no white balance control. Um, it has a fixed focus lens and I happen to have an external wide angle lens adapter. It's a magnetically mounted lens but I also am using some double sided tape to keep it in place a little more securely. But I use this wide angle adapter so when I, I'm doing vlogging I can actually get a wide angle shot at arm's length and it works really well. Uh, anyways, there's a set of stereo microphones on either side of the lens. On the back of the camera there is a little inch and a half color screen. There's a big red button for starting and stopping the recording. There's some, uh, there's four buttons around it. There is a video playback button and a trash can button for uh, deleting clips. And there's a, a USB connector on the, out, on the back side of it and a, an HDMI out and also a tripod socket. So this camera gets its name, the flip gets its name from the fact that there's a USB connector that flips out from the side of it and built into the camera is <clears throat> video editing and video transfer software that will load itself onto a PC or a Mac if you need to use it if you don't have your own editing software. But it will plug right into an iPad and iPad will see the clips and will transfer it directly. So to turn on the camera it has a momentary push button. Um, you push and the camera turns on almost within a second or two and all you do is push the button to start it and push it again to stop it. I like the video quality with the wide angle lens now because you don't have any exposure control it's not is going to be as good as some of these other cameras but the size of it the weight of it two hour record time built-in microphones you really can't beat the package itself I don't think there's any a new camera out there on the market these days that matches this for size, weight, capability, and the price. Since they don't make these anymore, but you can still buy them for under $100 on eBay or on Amazon. Um, the one issue I found on this one is, let me turn it off. Um, there's a rechargeable battery. It's a proprietary battery that originally came with this, but my battery is dead. And because Cisco is no longer making the flip cameras, um, you can buy replacement third-party batteries, but they're of questionable quality because they're third-party vendors. Um, so I've been using disposable AAA batteries to power it. And I noticed if you leave the AAA batteries in the camera, it will eat them real quick, like in a day or two. And the reason why is because if you notice, the power button on this camera is a momentary contact switch, which means there's a circuit inside the camera that's always on listening for that button press. So I've determined that the best way to do, to operate this camera is to pull off <clears throat> the front panel and take out one of the battery cells. Just take out one of the batteries when you're not using it and it'll <laughs> prolong the life of your batteries greatly. And also you should carry an extra set of batteries with you when you're using it. Now as far as the downsides of the flip camera, um, really there's only a couple issues I've seen. First of all, I can't control the white balance of the camera or the exposure and it tends to render my face rather red in tone. Okay. Uh, the second factor is there's no external microphone jack and the mics on this camera are very omnidirectional, very sensitive to a lot of noise around you. Um, I was shooting this afternoon in the Knob Hill section of town and I got 
uh, church bells from four blocks away were very distinct uh, in the camera. But anyway, so there is uh, issues with the sound uh, being uh, rather uh, picking up extraneous noise around you. By the way, the Fuji camera we're shooting with, the X10, also has internal mics and you probably hear the microwave beep went off in behind me in the kitchen uh, momentarily ago. But anyways, the flip camera, it is a great camera for the size, weight, capability, simplicity of use. You can't beat it. Uh, you just turn it on, push a button, record, and then pop it into your iPad or your tablet or your computer and upload the footage. It's real simple. I wish someone else made a camera like this today, but they don't, that I have found. So that's why I still use it, and that's the flip camera. So this is an example of the flip Ultra HD video footage using the LED panel on the Y adapter. So the LED panel is right next to the flip, about even with its lens. I'm using that wide angle lens adapter and I'm using the uh, UltraPod held at arm's length, which is a very lightweight and uh, stable kind of a tripod. Not as uh, flexible as the GorillaPod, but smaller and a little more rigid actually. You'll probably notice um, the white balance on my face will probably look reddish, I'm assuming. Uh, it has always in the past, so that's just the nature of the flip video. I thought about getting some kind of a subtle uh, correction, color correction filter and fitting it over the front of the lens, but I haven't figured out what color that filter should be, nor have I found the lens because it's a special size thread mount for this little wide angle lens. Uh, the other option is to put some kind of a colored gel over the LED light when I want to use the light. But anyways, that's getting a little complicated. But for what it is, this little flip camera is pretty decent. Okay, so this is um, a camera. This is a Fujifilm X10. And it's mounted on a little Y adapter on a little uh, UltraPod, which is an old handheld tripod that's been out for years. And then I have an LED uh, panel on the other side of that Y adapter. but. I also have a shoulder strap, a sailor strap, for when I'm using it as a still camera. But anyways, I haven't used the Fujifilm X10 as a video camera much at all, and now I'm kind of starting to, so I'm introducing it as my new one of my new vlogging cameras. So the Fujifilm X10 is one of the first cameras in their X series, and it's kind of a retro style, rangefinder-ish kind of style camera. It has an optical viewfinder. Uh, that looks through here and it's coupled to the zoom lens. So as you turn the zoom lens it it uh, changes the angle of view in the optical, but this one that optical viewfinder thingy broke. So I got this external uh, Olympus um, viewfinder that I use now. And uh, so when you this is a zoom lens and it goes from an angle of view equivalent of 28 to 110. You turn on the camera by twisting the lens. So it's in the 28 millimeter position which is the wide angle position. And for video purposes this camera has a video mode. It'll shoot in 1080p 30 frames per second. And what's cool about it is even though it doesn't have the full exposure control of the Lumix GH3, it has a manual uh, exposure compensation dial that works for video and I tested this all the way down to minus two stops and it indeed stops down the video exposure just as the dial indicates. Um, the thing about this is this for blogging or vlogging the screen does not flip around to the front so you can't really uh, view yourself. However, what I noticed is my external Olympus viewfinder, you can actually see yourself in the front lens of the viewfinder reflected. And so I put a piece of black cardstock behind the viewfinder and it helps to make it as a wide angle mirror. And so I can actually use that viewfinder as a way of lining up my shot for when I'm doing selfie videos. Okay, So this is a really light, small camera. It has a lot of good exposure controls, much better than the flip camera. And it's going to be a new camera a new vlogging camera that I'm going to be using, so I'm real excited about it. It does not have external mic jacks, so it only relies on the internal microphones built into the front of the camera, but I'm hoping that they're not going to be quite as <clears throat> omnidirectional and sensitive as the flip camera, uh, so that was one of the issues with the flip camera, and also with my older G5, it also had fixed internal microphones. So this is going to be a lighter, smaller weight uh, blogging camera than the older G5, um, but I'm hoping that's going to give me a good result. So this is 
one of those options out there. They don't make, Fuji does not make the X10 anymore. They make the X30 and the X70, but X10s are really inexpensive now. You can find them used, and they're a pretty darn good little camera. I've really been happy with mine. And even as a still camera, it's a great camera, but for, for vlogging, they were kind of uh, underappreciated, these uh, X10s were, but I'm really starting to appreciate it, and uh, we'll be seeing more of this camera in the future. Okay, this is my main uh, video camera and still camera in my collection. This is a Panasonic Lumix GH3. And that big fuzzy thing on top that looks like a Tribble out of the old Star Trek show is actually what's called a Dead Cat, which is a wind muff on my Shure external microphone. So the Lumix GH3 is a micro four-thirds camera, part of the GH lineup, which are their cameras optimized for video. So it's very much like the G series, an SLR style mirrorless camera with a grip um, and a sort of a hump in the middle that has a flash here that pops up. It has a electronic viewfinder and it has a flip out LCD screen. It flips out of the side which is great for um, video logging, for vlogging. And uh, so let's cover the GH3. So it's part of the Micro Four Thirds lineup. It takes Micro Four Thirds lenses and the main features of this camera is uh, First of all, it has an external microphone jack, so you can actually put a good mic on it. It has headphone output, and with the volume controls adjustable, it has HDMI live output. It has a fairly large size battery, and it shoots in uh, various uh, formats and codecs, but it'll shoot 1080p, 24 frames a second, 30, or 60, and it also has a 100, 200, or 300 percent fast shutter speed mode. It also has slow shutter speed modes. Um, so quite a bit of control. This dial up here has a manual video mode. When you're in the manual video mode, the normal still shutter button operates, starts and stops the video instead of the red video button on the back. And it gives you full control via the, the wheel here and the wheel on back. It gives you full control of exposure compensation, f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO during video mode, which is very cool. Now, the only uh, zoom lens of a wide enough angle of view that works for blogging that I have for this camera is this 14 to 45 Lumix lens. This is the original lens, the first lens in the Micro Four Thirds system. It's a 28 millimeter equivalent angle of view, uh, and it's an f 3.5 at the uh, wide aperture. So it's not super fast for low light capability, but it has a pretty good ISO, uh, low noise at high ISO. So that's my main uh, vlogging camera. It's fairly heavy. I'm using a uh, Joby Gorillapod for this, which is kind of the standard vlogging tripod now that people use. Um, I've only been using it for a few weeks or maybe a month or so, and I have kind of mixed feelings about it. It actually works okay. Um, it's just that when you want to set it down real quickly, if you have all three legs bunched together as a handle, which is how a lot of people use it, and then you want to convert it to a tripod, it's it's kind of fiddly, and you, you know, all these little articulating joints. But I did get the optional ball head uh, for it, so that works pretty good. Overall, it's a great package. It gives me some much better video quality than my older Lumix G5. I'm really happy with it. So let me talk a minute about the <coughs> Lumix uh, line of Micro Four Thirds cameras. Uh, so they were the first mirrorless cameras. Uh, in uh, December of 2008, I bought the first mirrorless camera, which is the Lumix G1. It did not have video, uh, but I used it for a few years with still photography, and then I got the G5, which does have video, and I used that for most of my early uh, YouTube videos. And then after I had the G5 for a few years, I decided recently to get the GH3 as a better high-end camera. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my little overview of these three types of blogging cameras. All three are older models. Uh, 
two of them are discontinued. Actually, all three of them are discontinued. But I hope this gives you the idea that you can use older equipment for vlogging purposes. And you just kind of have to learn to make it do. Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. Have yourself a great day.